welcome back to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. Today, we're looking at Reginald Pohl, possibly the worst son in Tudor history. If you're new here, very special warm welcome to you. I'm your host, Heather Tesco, and I've been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. This is the place where I put all my episodes from my various podcasts, as well as loads of extra content. If that sounds appealing, go ahead and hit subscribe so you never miss the videos I put out. Reginald Pohl was no ordinary man. Born into nobility in 1500, he was descended from the Duke of Clarence, who, of course, was the brother of Edward IV, and his life threaded through some of the most pivotal moments of the Tudor era. However, it was his actions, not his birthright, that etched his name into the annals of history. Pohl's journey to infamy starts with an act of generosity. Henry VIII, in his characteristic largesse, funded Pohl's education. The young Reginald Pohl was sent to the University of Padua in Italy, an opportunity only a select few could dream of. But little did Henry know that this act of goodwill would become a bitter point of contention. In the cauldron of religious and political transformation, Pohl found his calling. His unwavering Catholic faith set him on a collision course with Henry VIII, who was steering England towards the seismic shift of the Reformation. In 1536, Pohl, from the safety of Italy, defied the king openly. He penned Pro Ecclesiastice Unitas Defensione, a treatise which not only denounced Henry's annulment from Catherine of Aragon, but also denounced his establishment of the Church of England. This was a brazen act that directly bit the hand that had once fed him. Henry's reaction was, of course, as swift as it was brutal. But it was not Pohl who bore the brunt of it. He was safe in Italy. Instead, Henry's wrath fell on Pohl's family, his brother, Lord Montague, and his mother, Margaret, the Countess of Salisbury. Despite the imminent danger, Margaret stayed loyal to her son, even when he chose his faith over the safety of his family. Her unwavering love, however, met a cruel end. She did write a letter to Henry denouncing her son's actions, but it wasn't enough. In 1539, she was arrested, and two years later, the elderly countess was executed. The rest of the family, linked by blood to a traitor as well as the old Yorkist regime, were also imprisoned, and many were executed. The sacrifice of his family, the result of Pohl's defiance, is a significant stain on his reputation. But what makes it all the more tragic is that this stance was made possible by the king's patronage. The very education that Henry had funded shaped the man who would turn his back on him and his kingdom, resulting in the execution of both his mother and his brother. After Henry VIII's death in 1547, England entered a turbulent period under the Protestant rule of Edward VI, Henry's son. Reginald Pohl, living in Italy, kept a close eye on the religious flux in his homeland. With Edward's untimely death in 1553, Pohl's cousin, Mary Tudor, a staunch Catholic like Pohl himself, ascended the throne. This turn of events ushered in a dramatic change in his fortunes. Mary was eager to return England to the Catholic fold, and she invited Pohl back to England. In 1554, he returned, not as a wanted traitor, but as a papal legate, a representative of the Pope. His primary task was to oversee the reestablishment of Roman Catholicism in England, which he pursued with zeal. However, his tenure was fraught with challenges, including opposition from Protestant factions and the infamous Marian persecutions. Pohl served Mary until his death, just hours after the Queen's, on November 17, 1558. In the annals of Tudor history, Reginald Pohl's story serves as a chilling reminder of the high-stakes game between religion and politics. His commitment to his faith, enabled by the generosity of the very man he defied, led to catastrophic consequences for his family. This unfortunate blend of betrayal, ingratitude, and disregard for his family's welfare makes Pool's tale one of the most striking examples of filial disloyalty. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow the channel and reach more people. Plus, you never miss a video I put out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.